Hey everyone, it's Kathy with Body Builder Ministry. I um, wanted to do a quick video teaching. I've had several people ask me some questions recently about um, the Bible and about Bible study and about when we're going to do another Bible study that they just really enjoyed that a lot. And you know what? I did too. And we are going to get back to doing that again really soon. And I'm um, excited about what is, what's coming up next for us and everything. But tonight, um, I really wanted to share this this morning and I didn't get a chance to. It's just been a super busy day. Um, but you know, we're at the beginning of a new year, and um, I um, typically do different things where, where my Bible reading is concerned each year, and I just felt real strongly that I needed to share this. Um, I've had people ask me, um, you know, how do you read the Bible? What do you do? What's your, you know, routine like? What is your... Um, you know, what is it that you do? Um, how do you do it? Well, y'all know me. I like to do things differently and change things up. I get um, bored doing the same thing over and over and over. So, hey, Nicole, thanks for joining. Um, so, I like to do things differently. But because we are at the beginning of a new year, we're still in January, and a lot of people um, will start off goals at the beginning of the year. They set a goal to read through the entire Bible in a year, which is great. I know lots of people who do that, and I've done that several times myself. It is, um, it's, it's a fantastic thing. And some people do it like every single year. They always make sure that they read through the entire Bible in a year. If if you've never done that before, I want to, yay, go get it and um, just cheer you on to do that this year. Um, it's not too late to get started. I have started late in the year before and actually still been successful to get it done. So I want to encourage you to do that. Um, I'm in a different season right now. And, you know, we, we have seasons of life that we all are in, um, and, and they're different. Not everybody's in the same season at the same time. And so, um, I don't know how or why or who this is for particularly, but, but Father just keeps impressing upon my heart for about, well, this is the third day this week that I've heard this. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to share it. So I'm doing something different this year because I'm in a different season. But I'm also walking in some different waters right now. The sea is a different place for me that right now I'm swimming in waters that I've not um, been swimming in before. And so um, because of that... I need some different keys of how to go about um, doing certain things, making changes. My, if you have been following this ministry for any length of time, you probably saw my post at the beginning of the year. My words for this year were launch and transition. And um, those are some words that you really got to get your heart prepared to hold on to. And that means big changes, okay? You got to have courage to to be launched and to launch out, and you've also got to um, have courage to be in a place of transition. And so, um, because I'm in these different seas right now, um, I need different keys, and Father knows that. And maybe you are in that same place and are a similar place and need different keys as well. So, this season right now that I'm in, what I'm doing, if you do not already have on your smartphone, the Holy Bible app. I want to encourage you, download that thing for free. Set it up where you can have, many people I know do this already, but the verse of the day, there's a verse of the day that comes up every day, and um, have it, make sure that it's going to come to your phone before your alarm clock goes off. That way, when you, your, your clock goes off, the very first thing of the day that you see is the Word. That's the very first thing. And don't bypass that. Now, don't bypass that and be like, okay, well, let me see what else is going on. No, 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 no. Put the Word in first. Give your eyes to the Word first. Now, what I've been doing right now, I love to receive the verse of the day on my phone. And I know a lot 
lot of people do. But I, there's there's no substitute for opening up the real deal Bible, okay? There's no substitute for that. And something that I've, oh, I've loved the verse of the day for a long time, but something that I've been doing new, and maybe you've done this before, um, but it's really, really brought revelation for me in doing this, this in this season, and that is when I get the verse of the day, I am making that a chapter. I'm making making it my goal that I'm going to read that chapter, that entire chapter of the day, that that day. But not just that. But I'm gonna. You know, you don't always want to just take of one verse. You want to look at what's going on above that verse, and you want to look at what's going on below that verse, and um, see and and open your heart up, Father. What do you want me to to to? What do you want to teach me here? Because I've been guilty before of my daily Bible reading, check, um, did I get my chapters and my verses and check, it's, we need it more than right here, we need it in here, okay, it's not about, um, it's not a reading comprehension thing, I've done that, believe me, it, I did it as reading comprehension for the longest time, okay, I'm going to read it, and I'm going to memorize it, I'm going to write it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna know it, and I can quote it, and I can say it. Oh, but there's something so different about when it gets from here to here. Now, how is that? If we, I'm not saying don't read your chapter or chapters or whatever verses. I'm not telling you to do anything any different than what you're already doing. I'm encouraging you to read the Word every single day. If you're not already doing that, please do that. Even if it's just one verse, do that every day. Okay, what I am saying is that what I'm doing differently right now by taking the verse of the day that's already been given to me, reading that entire chapter, and then taking that verse and looking at it in many different versions and praying and asking the Lord to teach me about that one verse because I don't want just to be able to quote the word. I want to be able to walk it out, apply it to my life. How does this apply to my life, Lord? How do I apply this to my life? It's all about life application, and that's what changes and transforms us. So today's verse of the day, I'm just going to do this as an example, and the reason I think that I ended up doing this video on this day is because this verse happens to be a life, one of my life verses, and I absolutely love the verse of the day today. So it is in Matthew 16, and it's verse 24. Now, I always like to start with the King James Version and then um, work down from there. Um, and I want to tell you that today's verse of the day is Matthew 16, 24, and it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So that's the King James Version. Now, I'm going to show you what happens as we begin to take it apart and look at it in different versions. Not that anyone is right or wrong, but I'm a word girl. So when you start getting the, the um, under, you start looking at it with different wording, it gives you better understanding. It does me. I pray it will you as well. So when you look at it in the New King James Version, where he said in the other version, it said, if any man will come. See, now that says to me, we have a choice. Will you come or won't you come? If any man will come. New King James Version says, if anyone desires to come after me. Okay, so that's different. Then I went down and I have like 12 different versions that I absolutely love. So I, I'm only going to share seven with you. But then I went into the Amplified Version. I'm going to read all of this to you. It's so good. It says... Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interest, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and, if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. 
And that's the Amplified. Now, the Amplified Classic Edition says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself, disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interest, and take up his cross and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me. Conform wholly to my example in living and if need be, in dying also. That was good. The New Living Translation says, <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, okay, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. The Passion Translation, y'all know I love that one. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if you truly want to follow me, you should at once completely reject and disown your own life. And you must be willing to share my cross and experience it as your own. As you continually surrender, continually, as you continually surrender to my ways. Continually surrender. That's not on Sundays, y'all. That's continually surrender to his ways. That's take up your cross and follow him. That was like when I when I read that. Okay. Now the last one I'm going to read to you. Then I'm going to talk for a couple more minutes. Okay. The message translation. Y'all know this is a paraphrase. Okay. This is not a surely a translation. It's a paraphrase. But it says, <clears throat> then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Okay. Now you have to remember. I read the entire chapter of Matthew 16 today. So I can tell you because I did that, that in context, if you take this thing in context, this is right before this is when Peter is confessing Jesus as Christ, the, the Christ, because he, Jesus had said, who do you, who do men say that I am? And then he said, who do you say that I am? And so they had had that conversation and everything. And so there's a place there that says that, um, let's see if I can find it here. Um, that's, he, he turns to, verse 23 says, He turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. Okay? So that is Jesus um, was predicting his death and his resurrection to Peter. And Peter doesn't want that to happen to him. He's like, Lord, no, 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 I don't want that to happen to you. You know, and no, no, that doesn't have to happen and everything. And Jesus is saying to him, no, 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 you're thinking you're not thinking about the things of God. And see, Jesus knows the word has to be fulfilled. And so that that was um, him. He corrected Peter. So when we read verse 6, uh, chapter 16 of Mark, to the, I mean, sorry, y'all. When we read Matthew 16, the verse 24 today in the message translation, it says, Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Wow, that to me is so powerful. And I just love that. And y'all, I have this note that's been written in my bathroom for, I don't know, a week now. And now, all of a sudden, this whole thing, because of this, this the verse of the day came to my phone first thing this morning. I read that chapter today, and I... It all has come together. I've had such powerful revelation about what all that actually really, really means. And last week when I got a revelation and I wrote it down, and this has been sitting on my bathroom counter, it says, the only way to save you is to lose you. Well, why is that? Because you can't save you anyway. So, wow, when Jesus is saying, deny yourself. See, we've got to die to self. We've got to die to self. It is so important that we die to self. So, I 
I pray that this encourages you and that this has helped you some. Um, this is something, This, like I said, I'm in different season right now and I'm, I'm treading in different seas. And so I need different keys. And when I wrote that down last week, I, I thought, Lord, that is powerful and I get that and I'm not, but then after today, when I read that, all of that today, he brought it all together for me. So I want to encourage you, if you don't already have the Holy Bible app on your phone, um, I have several Bible apps on my phone that I use, um, but I do love that one because I love being able to get the verse of the day. And um, I want to encourage you to read your Bible, read the word every day like that. A lot of people just think, well, you know, yeah, of course I read my Bible every day. Well, but are we really doing that? And are we really having understanding? We need to be talking about the Word and pouring over it. Pouring it into our, into our soul and every day so that we can grow and know more and more and more. Knowing is growing, you know. That's how we, that's how we grow. So, um, Jacob asked the question, where should I start reading in my Bible? And Jacob, I am so glad you asked that question. For anybody who wants to do that and wants to know, you know, I don't know that there's a, a right answer or a wrong answer, but I always tell people to start with the Gospel of John in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the fourth book of the New Testament. I always say start with the book of John and read the Gospel of John first. And after that, go to what I call Little John, right almost to the very end of the Bible, where it's um, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Those are very, very short, little tiny chapters and everything. But um, those are great, great places to start so that you can begin to have a revelation and an understanding of the Word and of God's love for you because He loves you. He adores you. You are the greatest thing in the world where He's concerned. And um, so I'm for you and He's for you and we're cheering you on and we want you to read the Word and not just read it and check it off and um, even, don't even, it's not even about comprehending it for the purpose of spitting it back out. It's for the purpose of it changing our lives and us actually having understanding of what it is that we've read and, what, and why he said what he said. Why is that written down? Everything is not written down. But this is written down. We need to know why and how it applies to our life. Then being able to take what it is that we've read and heard and what it is we're praying for understanding over and how to apply it to our lives. How, how do I apply this to my life? Because it should be changing us. It should be changing us every single day. And so I, that is exciting to me. I absolutely love that. So thank you to those of you who have joined and watched tonight. I know it's late. And for anybody who watches on the replay, y'all feel free to like and share these videos. And um, they will be on the website and on the YouTube channel tomorrow because I'm not staying up to do that tonight. Go get you some sleep. I'm going to sign off now from Bodybuilder Ministry. Be encouraged and know that you are loved. Bye.